So now in this video, we're going to look at the NPN bipolar junction transistor. This is a 2N3904 wired as a current source. So right now, I have it wired to put about 10 milliamps of current through a load. No matter what the load is, as long as you got enough su uh, supply voltage. But in uh, any case, there you can see we're just shy of uh, 10 milliamps according to this. That's for the entire circuit. You're going to see as I raise the supply voltage, it's going to hold steady right there. At some point, it'll go up a bit. We were probably just a tad bit below 10 milliamps, and it might have registered that. But in any case, there you can see that. And I don't know how high of a voltage is we can go, so I will stop at uh, 16 volts. So really quickly, we will take a look at some voltages. As we saw before, I set the power supply to 8 volts, and we lose a little trickle from the resistance in the wiring. But uh, in any case, we have a Zener diode over here, and this is what sets the voltage. This is a 5.6 volt Zener diode, and looks like we're doing pretty good right there. Now we're going to look at the voltage across the emitter resistor right here, and we're going to look at a, a schematic coming up so we can see this better, and I'll zoom in. But in any case, there you can see, we got about 5 volts across. It's a 510 ohm resistor, but we're just going to estimate about uh, 500 ohms. And so 5 volts across 500 ohms, you expect 10 milliamps of current. So now we will raise the voltage. I'll go right up to 18 volts right there. And I think we stopped at 16 before, but 18 should still demonstrate this uh, pretty well. Let's uh, look at the supply voltage right there, about 18. Now we'll look across the Zener diode, and you can see the voltage is the same. That's how a Zener diode works when it is reverse bias. And I could have left that there. That's ground and take the voltage measurement there. You'll see 5.6. And again, across the resistor is still 5 volts. The rest of the voltage is going across the transistor and the LED, the load. Now, we're going to measure the current. will be a lot more accurate if we measure with the multimeter. So I'm going to set it to milliamps of current right there. And we can leave the red probe there for everything but high current for this meter. So that includes milliamps of current. Now we will go to the board and zoom in a bit closer than we did. So you can see here we got the uh, Zener diode there. It's reverse bias. The cathode is more positive, anode uh, more negative. That's how the Zener diode works to get its Zener voltage across it. We got the base of the transistor in the middle there where the jumper comes the emitter to our current setting resistor, and then the collector to our load. What I'm going to do is take this jumper. We need to open up the circuit to measure current. And uh, now we got that. Up there, we got a gap. And we will measure the current. So hopefully you saw that. We got 8 volts at the supply now. And we will measure the current by bridging the gap with the multimeter. So you can see 9.74. We expect a little less than uh, 10 milliamps of current. And that's what we got. So now we're gonna bypass the LED. We could get rid of it altogether and just uh, touch the connector directly. But there you can see, 9.75. So that's touching the cathode of the LED directly, but electrically, that was the same as connecting it directly to the collector of the transistor. Now again, we will raise the voltage. I'm going to stop at uh, 15 volts this time. I think 18 was pushing it with the LED. And now we don't even have the LED. So quickly, we're going to measure the current without the LED right there. And you can see it's the same amount of current there. You know, it might uh, shift just slightly. And uh, over time, as components warm up, it may shift even more. But for the most part, it's going to hold uh, pretty steady right there. And uh, there you can see with the LED, we have a little more current. And also with the LED, it's dropping some of the voltage from the transistor. And so you'd be able to use uh, some more voltage, a couple more volts than without the LED. And of course, I do have a diagram for this. I'm making one, uh, hopefully for every video of this video series. Now we have uh, approximately 10 milliamp NPN bipolar junction transistor. That's the abbreviation current source or LED driver. So it could be an LED driver if you want uh, 10 milliamps and you add an LED to it. So driver means it's setting the current through it. And 
we're using a 2N3904, we can get up to uh, 635 milliwatts of a uh, maximum power dissipation. So you won't want to aim for that, but uh, that's what it's rated for. A collector current of 200 milliamps maximum, we have it set to uh, 10 milliamps. So we're a little more interested in the power of the transistor. So if we drop 5 volts, and that leaves 8 volts across the transistor, so either 13 volt or uh, 15 volts, in uh, these two examples, because the LED drops about uh, 2 volts, we will have about 0 0.08 watts of power. That's why I wasn't too worried about going up a bit. That's uh, 80 milliwatts. And you can see 635 milliwatts there. Uh, but uh, still, it quickly increases the power dissipation as you raise the uh, voltage. So I wanted to keep it within safe levels. Here we have our example without the LED. The Zener diode, as I said before, sets its Zener voltage. So I'm using a 5.6 volt Zener diode because the base two emitter drops about 0.6 volts. And uh, so that will set about 5 volts across an emitter resistor. That will hold, the transistor will hold that voltage pretty steady. We looked at that in the last video as an emitter follower. We could output to a load and set a voltage that's to a load. That's an emitter follower. But now instead, we got the collector here, the current flowing through the collector, the emitter, and the current setting resistor depends on the voltage across the voltage, uh, across the resistor, because it's going to hold that voltage steady. So 5 volts divided by 500 ohms of resistance is 0 0.01 amps, or 10 milliamps, right there. Adding the LED, so you change the load on the collector side, but that doesn't matter. The transistor is still going to do what it can to hold 5 volts across a, in this case, 500 ohm resistor. I actually used 510 in the video. That's why we had slightly less uh, current, but we're still really close to 10 milliamps. But in uh, any case, we still got that 5 volts because 5.6 at the base, we lose about 0.6 right there. Transistor does what it can by letting current flow through as it can to keep that voltage. Having the LED does not change that. It does drop about 2 volts from the transistor. The transistor drops voltage as needed to hold 5 volts. The LED is also dropping 5 volts. So I hope that makes sense. So we can go up and supply voltage a couple more volts than we would without an LED right there. Now let's talk about the uh, 10,000 ohm resistor here. You need current to flow through the Zener diode to build up that 5.6 volts right there. You don't need a lot of current though. So 10,000 ohm resistor should do just fine. You also need really almost no current at all for this particular circuit for the base 2 emitter. So a 10,000 ohm resistor will work perfectly fine. The uh, voltage builds up across a Zener diode. If it's below the Zener voltage, it'll just stay down below. It won't conduct. But once it gets somewhere close to 5.6 volts, then it starts conducting. If you try to raise the voltage, it just conducts more current and holds that voltage down. So I don't know the limit of current you can put through it. Uh, I don't think you want to do a ton, but in any case, a small amount of current still gets you that voltage. That's the goal right there. So, that's about it. Collector, base, emitter. As a review, I'm using 2N3904. Any other NPN bipolar junction transistor should work just fine, but uh, 2N3904 is pretty common. Other transistors may have a different pin layout, but if it starts with 2N, it probably, and it's a bipolar junction transistor, it probably has this pin layout. I uh, wrote a little note here. I used a 510. Could also use 470. You'd have slightly more than 10 milliamps of current, but would still be close with this exact same uh, circuit. So you'd be uh, plenty fine using that instead. So hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting in the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I would appreciate it. I'll see ya in the next video.